Well, joining us now is Naguib Sawiri, the chairman of Egypt's largest telecoms company, Oraskom Telecom, and one of the country's wealthiest businessmen. Thank you so much for joining us today on the phone. Now, yesterday you had a meeting with Omar Suleiman. Tell us about that meeting. Well, it was a very positive meeting, uh, Mr. Suleiman, in an unprecedented manner. He has invited all the opposition uh, figures of the country, including the parties, and notably two uh, most important uh, groups were uh, represented. The Muslim Brotherhood, for the first time in the history of Egypt, uh, and the young people who went to uh, the uh, screen, you are showing them on your screen right now, who went to the streets revolting, five of them representing the use of uh, Tahrir Square. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sawiris, what do you make of the fact, though, that Mr. El-Baradai apparently wasn't invited and he didn't attend the meeting? Well, I don't uh, uh, know why he did not attend the meeting. I don't know if he was uh, invited uh, or not, but I believe he should have been uh, invited. Uh, he has been one of the, uh, the first uh, persons to go out and uh, call for reforms. So his presence is really uh, important. Uh, but in essence, the meeting was very, very positive. We have seen for the first time some uh, positive uh, notions coming uh, and we discussed all our demands. We did not end the meeting with all the demands we wanted, but I would say that uh, a big uh, um, progress has been uh, achieved. Uh, so m two main um, uh, items, there is a, a, a committee that will be now formed to change our constitution, yeah. which has been the cause of all this uh, unrest. And another committee, including the young people of Egypt who revolted, uh, that will monitor the seriousness of the current regime to implement uh, all the voices of freedom and democracy on the state. By attending that meeting, do you believe that the current government is really ready and wants reform? I think uh, they are serious about reforms. That's the main uh, uh, outcome of yesterday's meeting. They have not given uh, in on all the protesters' demands, uh, many of uh, uh, demands which we all share and aspire for. But what we came out from that meeting is that we got some of these demands, which is a right step in the first, uh, in the right direction. Uh, Mr. Solomon has promised more uh, steps into a real democracy. Do we have a, a technical problem from a legislative situation today that if Mr. Mubarak would uh, stand down today, there is no mechanism to ensure uh, a substitution or to ensure a peaceful uh, um, movement uh, of power to uh, the next democratic regime. But Mr. Sabri, so, uh, why are we not seeing more reforms? We have 300 deaths, injuries to at least 1,200 people. Why do we have not reforms coming sooner? Uh, no, we have. I mean, look, what, what the revolution has uh, achieved till now, that Mr. Mubarak will not run for a second office. His son is now completely uh, not an option. The National Party has been practically, uh, is practically dead. Their leaders have been completely changed. All the, the, non, uh, the leaders who were uh, uh, people hated were removed. Uh, the freedom of press and media has been guaranteed now. Our a newspaper and our media uh, station for the first time is completely free and, and doing uh, full coverage right. of the opposition without any interference. So, Mr. Sawiri, so what, what role then do you see for the, for the army playing in this new political landscape? I hope they, they maintain only their current role, which is keeping peace on the streets until the police forces return. And uh, this morning I saw the police on the streets. I saw life coming back to Cairo. So I'm very optimistic. Uh, we saw some of the banks actually opening, a couple of, uh, you know, hundreds of people trying to get their money out of it. We were speaking to the deputy central bank governor of Egypt a short while ago. He says, well, slowly it's coming back to normal, but very slowly. What impact will it have overall in the economy? Ma'am, I have to give you the same answer I've been giving uh, to everybody. There is no price of freedom. Even capitalists like us who lost money and are continuing to lose money, we will... Uh, pay any price to restore a, a real democratic life for our beloved country because we are, have been all calling for that for a long time. I understand and I respect that, but you also need a very strong economy to deal with democracy. Are you not concerned that investors will shy away from Egypt? 
No, investors should understand that a really democratic regime is the best insurance for their investment. If the West and America wants to help, my call to them is to form a Marshall Plan together with our Gulf countries to ensure that the young people of Egypt will find jobs and will not have to go back to the streets to, uh, to request the minimum human rights of a decent job and democratic rights. Mr. Kassawir, so are you concerned about uh, the role that the Muslim Brotherhood can play in this? And is there a real concern that actually this may tip Egypt uh, further right? Uh, I am not concerned uh, that I can assure you that this movement has nothing uh, that uh, not nothing is that the Muslim Brotherhood in this movement are a minority, have a minority position. The concern is that this minority, because they are better organized, because they have a lot of followers, because they've been operating underground in the last 23 years, that they would jump and kidnap this revolution. That's my concern. Okay, Mr. Sawiris, uh, understood. Thank you so much. Naguib Sawiris, there, Oraskom Telecom CEO.